How's it going everybody? My name's Kramer with SpookyPoker.com and I'm gonna help you start beating the micros. So I'm just gonna give you a very quick about me. Feel free to check the feel free to check the timestamps below if you just want to skip this. You don't care about who I am. Uh, that's totally understandable. And if you just want to see the uh, tips that I've got for you, they're gonna be really good. And um, I'll tell you why I know they're good. So first of all, I'll just give a quick about me. So. Uh, like I mentioned, my name's Kramer. Um, I started playing poker in 2013, and ever since then, I've been a winning poker player, but, um, you know, along the way, you learn a lot of things. I've played off and on, but uh, just to give you, like, some hard hard numbers, um, in, uh, in 2014, I ran up uh, a $100 buy-in to about $2,000 buy-in, just slowly moving up stakes, um, and then I took a lot of time off after playing that. And then last year in 2020, I played for a few months when the pandemic was like going crazy and I won about $1,000 in two or three months, uh, just playing, you know, pretty regularly, I'd say about part time. And I just started playing a little bit again um, this year and I've been playing the last few days and I'm up, I don't know, 30 bucks or something on a $200 buy-in. So I've got a consistent winning record. I'm not the best poker player of all time, but I can definitely help you out if you're uh, checking out this kind of video. So now that that's over, let's start talking about see some uh, concrete strategies that will help you improve your your micro stakes poker game. So uh, let's let's uh, let's lay this out. So I'm going to be talking about four main topics, and at the end I'll have a bonus tip, which is specifically catered to people who play on America's Card Room. So that may be irrelevant to you, but the first four are going to be relevant to anyone trying to play the micro stakes. So the first thing I recommend is that you, if you are comfortable with this, that you specialize in non hold'em games. And the reason for that is, you know, the year's 2021, everyone is pretty, pretty decent at hold'em these days. And, you know, I'm just speaking directly from experience over the last few days. I look at the Hold'em games and I look at the PLO games and the PLO games are just much, much softer. People are getting willing to get it in with very mediocre hands, with very bad equity, and they'll just stack off. You know, some people just have some very bad fundamentals in PLO, whereas with Hold'em, um, you know, people are a lot less likely to get stacks in with mediocre hands and the pots you know, they're just way more controlled. People just have way more experience. That's really what it comes down to. So I really recommend you get good at PLO. And something that I was, I was playing this uh, maybe a few months ago when I was running up a bankroll again, just because I needed some money. I was playing some stud tournaments. Now, it's not, if you're not an experienced poker player, just picking up stud and getting good at it is not going to be easy. But if you are up to the challenge and you, you're willing to play stud every day for maybe a week, you'll be... Honestly, 30% better than the competition, something like that, something that's very significant and can uh, drastically improve your win rate. And if you're playing on America's Card Room and you're playing micro stakes tournaments, then there is a micro stake uh, buy in tournament. It's like a dollar or something. And if you get like top eight, you might make like 25 bucks, 40 bucks. I think I won it twice. And, you know, I turned, you know, just looking at the, the investment from the stud tournament I turned like probably ten dollars of buy-ins into a hundred dollars or something like that uh, maybe more than that and also I don't yeah may, probably entered about 10 tournaments one one of them for sure I think I won two but the point is is I made um, a significant ROI and the reason I can confidently say uh, what I'm saying is because I just played stud every day for a few weeks and I just got you know like six days a week for a few weeks and I just got so much better than the competition that I was consistently bluffing people out of pots and just crushing them, really. So I'd recommend getting good at stud and PLO. So then uh, one more quick note uh, when discussing format. So I don't know the exact uh, terminology that I should be using, but this is just discussing, you know, game types and, 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 and the like. But when you are playing Hold'em, I really recommend playing full ring and looking for games with as many fish as possible. That should be obvious, but it's something that if you're not thinking about, uh, this can drastically improve your win rate. So that's just another reminder, I'll say it again. If you're playing, I mean, yeah, the reason this is only applicable to hold them is because you don't want to really play nine-handed PLO. Um, it, that game's 
don't run very often and if they do it's just too wild so if you're playing hold'em full ring is the way to go and all you need is one or two fish to get their money in bad just a few times and you can easily come up a few buy-ins so on a similar note we'll move on to the second point which is game selection so you want to look for games with maniacs which is something i was just talking about but uh, this is a more nuanced point you want to look for games with maniacs and um, as i just mentioned it only takes a few pots to you know book a winning a good winning session you know um you know from my point of view i deposited 200 dollars on acr um, maybe five days ago on the first or so it's now the sixth and uh, the first day i made 20 dollars and you know if you make 20 dollars on a 200 dollars investment obviously that trend probably won't continue but that's a pretty good return on investment you i think most people would agree with that so anyway, um, if you're just playing 10 and L, you only need to book, um, you only need to win a few big pots to book a nice win. So the next point uh, regarding game selection is you don't want to rely on games with nits. Now, if you're playing live poker, that's a different story because those games are at a minimum, you know, one, two and L. So you're looking at $200 and you can bluff someone off of a $50 pot. And you know, that's, that's some pretty nice profit, but when you're playing these micro stakes, you don't want to be playing a ton of pots because a lot of them are just going to go bet, fold, fold, or, you know, you have to fold when someone bets and you're just uh, getting crushed by the rake. And I mean, that's true in live as well. You don't want to be playing, playing a bunch of small pots, but uh, the difference is that if people just want to see pots and you're playing a bunch against a bunch of nits online, you're just going to be winning like 10 cents here, you know, just a few big blinds there and, uh, it's just getting crushed by the rake, so I really don't recommend playing with nits. And um, it's also worth noting that, um, you know, the, the obviously I don't intend to insult anybody, but if you if you are playing micros, you're probably not that good, and you don't want to get really fancy with your gameplay. You know, the point of the micros is to get the fundamentals down and build your bankroll so you can start playing bigger stakes now. You know there's nothing wrong with trying to learn so you know if you see a spot where you it's like consistent and you feel like you can learn from it sure sure it's like good to bluff here and there and like try to learn spots but um the point of this is to help you beat micros and the best way to beat micros is not by bluffing out nits especially when they're incapable of making big folds anyway so the third point let's talk about ranges so uh, you know, if you're not if you're not very familiar with poker, ranges is is just like deciding which um, hands you're gonna play and how you're gonna play them, like in what position. So, for example, um, well, I don't need to give an example. You you should probably understand ranges, but um, if you don't, I'll just say tight is right in all of these games. Um, if you think about poker as a whole, like the whole system of poker, you think in what way are you making money, right? Um, it's, you know, some people look at poker on a hand-to-hand -hand basis and they can't see the bigger picture. I want you to see the bigger picture and understand that um, the way that you beat micros and you beat really bad players is just by playing very solid fundamentals. You know, you if you played poker full time and you found the right games, you could probably make 50 grand a year or, or more just playing solid poker fundamentals without making any huge mistakes, especially playing live. You know, I don't know how many uh, hours you'd have to put in but you could definitely make decent money like all you have to do to beat crappy players is just play tight and good abc poker because what they'll do is they'll spaz out you know you're always going to have crazy people especially at micros who don't care about the money or they just you know they just want the the high of bluffing people or going all in and um the way that you beat them is by playing abc um you know simple ranges you know, you play your, your good hands strong and you, if you have mediocre hands and you're feeling a lot of pressure, you just let them go. And if people bluff you, then that's fine. You'll, you'll just take note of that and uh, maybe trap them next hand. So, um, just to, uh, one more point about tight is right, which is, um, people are also never thinking about your ranges. So, you could fold for two hand or two 
rotate what is it called um okay i'm blanking on the term but like rotations in live straight um two three four doesn't matter and then it's like for some reason you open and then like you just because maybe you're you're a young guy or something or young girl people just want to call you or they or it's not even that deep they just see like oh four or five suited i just want to play this hand and they're just going to call you people really don't care about your ranges most people are just there to gamble and look at their cards and see <laughs> can i can i hit this hand you know are they giving me a good price to try to draw my hand that's that's what a lot of people are thinking so uh, people don't give a f about your ranges and so the next thing is it's okay to open up your range a little bit in late position so if you've been playing at a table for a few rotations and you understand like okay well these guys defend like very tight they're blinds they don't defend very uh, loose and um, uh, you have a good feel for the table you know maybe you're up a little bit you're not you're not playing scared or anything okay maybe it's okay to open jack 10 offsuit on the button and uh, you know things like that or if you know the guy on your left is also really tight you can open up jack 10 uh, one before the button whatever <laughs> position that is um, it's okay to do these things but uh, generally speaking, I only open up my range when I have a very specific reason to do it at uh, micro stakes. And I, I, you know, that's how I beat micro stakes, and I think you should play the same. So moving on to the last, moving on to the last point here, we're going to talk about HUDs and reads. So if you don't know what a HUD is, it's a heads-up display, which is something like Poker Tracker. Which, if you're interested in checking that out, you can uh, click the link below. I'll have a link. It's going to be an affiliate link, so if you decide to buy it, I'll get a commission, but uh, I would say this, this if you play enough poker, this will pay for itself because you'll um, you'll have information on, on people who don't have information on you, and you'll just be, uh, it'll be way easier to um, just make your decisions, but you know, given that, I don't want to talk too much about HUDs. So um, the first thing I want to note is actually not HUD related. It's actually going to be color color coding related. So uh, if you, you know, obviously I've been showing my gameplay right here. You can see I've got colors everywhere. Uh, not that many on the tables I'm actually showing, but the point is, is that you should also utilize a color coding system. And the reason I like this is because it's simple and it makes it easy for the average poker player to uh, make better decisions. If you've got a bunch of information with your heads up display, it may become confusing. I don't even, like if you think about poker from the highest level in terms of like ranges and like, you know, GTO, I don't even do that whatsoever. You, you really don't need to know about GTO until you're playing like like 510 or something online where you've got like really hard grinders like you don't need to worry about gto when you're low stakes so what you should do instead is use a color coding system combined with a few um exploitable habits that people might have based on your head but um you know i'm rambling a little bit so let's talk about the color coding system so um i'll have mine listed but um I just have one color for loose aggressive, one for loose passive, one for uh, maniac and being aggressive, one for tight aggressive slash reggae, and uh, another one for tight passive. So this makes your decision making easier. You can just quickly glance at someone's color. Once you get a few hands on them, you can usually make these kinds of distinctions and um, cater your play to their play. Now, it's important to know that this isn't an end-all be-all because people change over time. You know, sometimes people are like having an aggressive day. They're like, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm sick of getting run over. I'm just going to push, push, push. And like some people are good and they'll adjust. But most people don't. Most people don't adjust and it's good to have these things. Um, especially like for me, if I see a green mark on somebody and then I see them raising two hands in a row, it's like, I know what's up. And you know, that's... <laughs> That's what I like to see. I like to see the green markers on my screens because that means I played with them in the past and I know, and I know they're crazy and they're just confirming that. So now let's talk about the HUD. And I'll say don't try to be a poker pro with your HUD, which I already mentioned. So I'm gonna give a very specific example where it's okay to use a HUD and try to be a poker pro. 
So for example, um, if you see someone with like a 20% open rate, but a, you know, over 75% fold to three bet rate over like 10 hands then, or, or a hundred hands or something like something crazy. Um, okay. Obviously you can exploit that. Um, you shouldn't do it too much because then they're going to be aware that, that they're being exploited, but you can slightly open up your range to, you know, three bet the Jack 10 suited or the, I don't know, the, the ace 10 offsuit, these kinds of hands that aren't like super strong, but, um, you know, maybe you'd fold the, you'd fold them to a raise, but since this guy, uh, obviously folds so much, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to three bet these spots, but. Again, don't get carried away. Um, it's really, honestly, I recommend playing exploitable poker at these low low levels, so that's totally fine. And uh, don't get carried away, start three betting other people light, but it's okay to bet three bet people with these like um, very obvious statistics. So um, now I'm just going to reiterate a point I made earlier, which is why we don't care too much about the HUD. So. We are not GTO players at microstakes, and you, you know, people make the argument that GTO doesn't even work at microstakes, which, in theory, that that shouldn't be correct. But it's it's kind of a complicated thing to think about, and you know, I haven't even thought about it recently. But the point is, is that you you just have to play ABC. That's what I already said, and you're not trying to be this like calculating machine, just like running all these calculations for all these different like things because like people don't even think about how much they bet like they don't care about odds and it's like you shouldn't you know you shouldn't be uh relying on their like faulty information they don't know what they're representing so the point of all of this is don't try to like filter this information into like oh he he bets the turn uh you know 66 percent of the time after he c bets and it's like don't do that just don't do that I'm not even smart enough to understand why that works. I haven't put enough time into poker to understand all of that. And I consistently beat micros. So that's all you need to know. Um, don't try to be a poker pro uh, with your HUD. Just use it for exploitable spots and that's it. So let's talk about the last thing, which is gonna be bomb pots. Um, bomb pots is the bonus tip. And that's specific to ACR, America's Card Room. So first of all, what are bomb pots? Bomb pots are um, these things that they take like three big blinds from everybody and they uh, throw it in the middle, give you random cards, deal a button in a random spot, and off you go. So I've um, I've actually run very very bad in bomb pots, um, but I don't know. That, that's kind of beside the point. I was I was gonna say I've, the reason I even said that is because I was gonna be like, oh, I made a lot of money in bomb pots, but I've I've actually like probably gone about even in bomb pods, but um, in terms of equity, I'm very, very up. But in terms of actual outcome, I'm I'm probably about even with bomb pots. So uh, that's that's a bit irrelevant. But um, people make some big mistakes with these bomb pots, and we're gonna talk about them. So first of all, for you, do not overplay your hand ever. If you get a lot of heat or a lot of pressure while playing a bomb pot, you know, you make a bet and you get raised by someone who's like, you just don't have that much information on them. Just let it go. Unless you have like top set. Uh, okay. You know, maybe, you, maybe you shove all in or something, but you know, I've flopped top set on a straight board is like six, seven, 10. And I had like trip tens and <laughs> I was like positive that the guy had had the nuts because it was like bet raise 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 and it's like it was a nine-handed game and it's like god he, he of course he has it it's like but can i get away from trip tens and i, I said no but you know that's kind of overplaying my hand because it's like it goes to bet raise 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 anyway don't overplay your hands if you get a lot of heat while playing bomb pots just let it go someone could very likely have the nuts especially if it's a uh, nine-handed game so the next one is never bluff in bomb pots. So that's, um, I guess that's worth saying because, you know, people, people are aware that bluffing is a potentially good strategy in bomb pots because you could have anything. So everyone could have missed and you can represent anything. So 
Um, you know, you might get some people who really want to hang on and don't want to get bluffed, if they, especially if they have top pair. You know, people way overvalue top pair in bomb pots. So um, for that reason, you don't want to be the one bluffing and just getting caught bluffing. And uh, another another reason is uh, people love to check raise in bomb pots. You know, if someone flops a set and their early position, there's you know there's a lot of people to act and there's a you know if if I have or if you know if I have like pocket fives on a five deuce king board, you know someone with king king ten plus is probably going to bet their top pair. So you know someone in early position with middle set is probably going to check raise. So that's another reason you don't want to bluff. You it's just really it's like fairly likely that you'll get check raised anyway. So uh, don't do that. Um, and the last thing to remember is that people's ranges are completely undefined in bomb pots. So, you know, you might think like, oh, well, this guy's always full of it. Or like this guy, oh, he knows that like he plays tight. Like you might have all of these thoughts, but at the end of the day, those, that's just like pure, I, I want to say conjecture. I don't know the exact definition of that, but it's like, it's pure thought. It's not, it's not based on evidence whatsoever because again, you just have zero details about the hand. No one raised, uh, no one came in at a certain position that indicates they might have a strong hand or a weak hand. It's just completely bonkers in there. So, um, you know, I, I always give people a lot of credit with bomb pots. The only time, the lightest I'll get it in is like top and bottom pair versus someone who's like maybe a little bit aggro or if there's like draws on the board. But like, other than that, if you don't have top two or better, just don't don't go crazy in bomb pots. So that's gonna wrap up the video. Hopefully, you guys got some good information out of that. Um, you know, this is this is just you know this isn't ever this is a lot of great information, but it's not everything. So um, hopefully, you got some good tips. I'd say just write down a few important things that you want to remember and uh, put them into play. Maybe come back to this video later, add it to your watch later or something, and uh, listen to it again. See if you can uh, pick something up. And um, yeah, so let me get, let me know if you guys want part two. Um, there's definitely more things I could talk about, but these are just the main ones that came to mind. And I saw some other guy's video on like micro stakes in 2021 being pointless. And I was like, that's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. He's gotta be trolling because <laughs> He plays poker like a, a dummy, but um, you know that that's uh, beside the point. So uh, please drop a like if the video helped you at all. I hope I have earned a like from you guys. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to talk about. Um, I plan on making videos for PLO and stud uh, in the future and tournaments and things of that nature. But uh, this is just the first video on this channel, so let me know how it goes, and um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, the last thing I'll say, I guess, is if you plan on uh, playing on ACR or Bovada or anything, I'd appreciate it if you used my links. Uh, though, you know, I don't think it costs you anything, but it'll give me like a kickback if you make a deposit. So, uh, last note there. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.